His breath smells of the meat, cattle, and cigars, and liquor. And what about you? Have you continued with the breath? How didn't answer? Have you continued your practice? No. The master spat out the pit of his jambouille. A skeletal puppy darted from under the porch and gobbled it quickly, trembling, and then dematerialized. In their dreams, the old man said, dogs travel. Morning's mist beginning to shape itself almost immediately. 
to see part of the film later on. The colonel said he understood, but I wasn't sure he did. And as dusk arrived, and then the darkness, and as it grew evident that nobody at all would come, Colonel Sands asked to have the show played just for himself. The movie machine, powered by the noisy generator, filled the temple with flickering illumination and a hollow, booming voice and strident music. Finding life in his 
his body, he overcame some of his shock and rolled himself over. Quickly, the colonel tossed the helmet aside, scooped up the hand grenade, pitched it underhanded toward the doorway, but it struck the wall and made it only as far as the threshold, and he said, damn it all. He approached it, bent, and took a firm hold of it, and strode out the door into the well. He moved the lid aside and tossed the device into the depths. Then he walked back to the building and turned off his generator. Followed him out, perhaps an advisedly. Mrs. Van tended to the soldier, talking rapid English, brushing at his shirt and trousers energetically, almost hysterically, as if batting at flames. When she was done, she stuttered on how, swiping at the back of his shirt. These are bad people, she said in English. This is what happens with these horrible people. The master came out of the temple. From his place behind the screen, Stumbles nothing. When Al told him about the grenade, he took two long steps backward away from the lip of the well. The colonel said, Look, I'm sorry. The well was the quickest place to come to mind. Al translated the colonel's apology and then the master's reply. I believe it's safe. If that grenade goes off, it's going to muddy up your water. The master said, Later it will become calm again. Must be deep, and is it concrete? Hal said, "Concrete construction. It's top notch. Top notch. It's very well made. Yes, it was placed by the Swiss Red Cross. When was this? I don't know when." The colonel said, "They heard that noisy goddamn generator, didn't they?" By way of an answer, Hal burst his lips. Al stood by politely while the visitors reloaded their gear and radioed the encampment on Good Luck Mountain. We'll scoot on up the hill, the colonel said. Good. There it's more secure, Al agreed. In minutes, a patrol of three jeeps arrived and many soldiers, and the convoy roared away into the night. Al crept into the schoolroom and felt along the wall for a nail. He undressed and hung up his shirt and trousers, straw mat with his hands, unrolled two yards of linen to cover him against the mosquitoes. The master heard him from the other side of the wall in the temple and called good night. Hal replied softly and lay back in his shorts and undershirt in the pitch dark. This colonel, Hal had never encountered him in a uniform. It seemed fitting. Somehow he thought of all Americans as civilians, although in his entire life he'd seen only government and a few missionaries. Just the same, he thought of Americans as cowboys. The young soldier's courage astounded him. Maybe it was good they'd come to Vietnam. But even through the wall, he could feel the master's anger at himself for dealing with the colonel. The American was attractive, fascinating, but the Americans were, in the end, just another horde of puppet masters. The curtain falls in the French, now the American puppet drama. But the time of slaves and puppets was over. A thousand years under China, then the French domination. All of it finished. Now comes freedom. Al spoke softly to Master. He wished him lucky dreams. He himself couldn't sleep. His bowels smoldered with fear. What if another grenade rolled toward him out of the night? Listening for his murderers, he became a of life of the jungle, of the collective roar of insects, as big as any cities at noon. A curse lay over everything. His wife was sick, his nephew was dead, the wars would never stop. He found his sandals with his feet, 